As of this morning, the uh, the county clerk who was ordered to jail yesterday in Kentucky uh, still locked up. Uh, we needed to point something out about this this morning, and we've had a lot going on, so I wanted to try to squeeze it in here at the beginning of the second hour. I have a, a couple of thoughts on uh, on this situation, and, and I don't know, maybe some of you are uh, are thinking along the same lines. Number one, one of my favorite writers, Father Dwight Longnecker today, uh, says that while he respects what she's done and the conviction she may have, he thinks that she should have actually resigned. She should have resigned her position if she couldn't carry out the law. And he cites Sir Thomas More as an ex- historical example. More had been the Lord Chancellor of England, and when he couldn't abide by uh, by all of the divorces of Henry VIII, uh, stepped aside and said, I-, I no longer want to be involved in any of this. The thing is, though, it didn't save More's life, and within a few years he still lost his head as they tried to pressure him to at least say that he agreed. That's that's the interesting thing. In this country, right now you can lose your job or go to jail because you will not carry out these laws. Nobody yet is chopping off your head, though, because you will not sanction it personally. Yet. That's the argument to make. Secondly, I, I think that if there were 100,000 people around the country who would take a similar stand, could they lock them all up? Think about that for a moment. Yes, I suppose they could, but what sort of burden would that suddenly put on the system? And if we had a million people nationwide who suddenly said, I object and I am not going to do this, I am not going to take the photographs for that wedding, I am not going to bake a cake for that wedding, I refuse. So many people have just said, well, I'll simply stop baking cakes or stop taking pictures. But that hurts your business. And somebody else will take up the slack. So what if, what if you had a couple of million people or 5 million people nationwide, all putting out their wrists saying, all right, cuff me, take me away. There's a point, isn't there? Somewhere between probably a few hundred and a few million, where all of a sudden there's going to be a change in the system. You might bring it down. And you might bring down what many of you view to be unjust unjust laws or court rulings at this stage of the game. Nine minutes after 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. And NewsRadio1310.com, 54. The one thing that I will say, and I'm deeply disappointed by the number of people who are criticizing this woman because she's on her fourth husband, and they are all saying, well, you see, I mean, she didn't follow God's law either, so who is she to take this stand? All right, let's stand back for a minute. Uh, I am a Christian, but I was not baptized until I was 39. Let me make that clear. Oh, I had opportunities. My parents didn't get around to doing it when I was a kid. Uh, they were worshiping at the altar of the uh, of what was called the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. They were so tied up in the uh, labor movement when I was a kid. Later on, by the way, they disavowed it. But they were so tied up in, in it when I was a kid, they didn't bother to go to church. And uh, they didn't feel they had to. And they didn't feel they had to take their kids. We got some great religious instruction at various Bible schools and from grandparents and the like, but no, they didn't believe that they had to uh, make an effort to do that. I'm not saying that's wrong, but I I think that I made dang sure that when my daughter was little, she didn't necessarily always like it, but she had to go. As she said to me one time, she said, but Dad, it's the same thing every week. (laughs) Of course it is. (laughs) Absolutely it is. And when you get older, you maybe understand that a little bit more. But the thing is, when I decided at 39 that I was officially going to take the plunge, that cleansed away, if you will, a lot of bad things I did for the first nearly 40 years of my life. It's that commitment that does that. Now, I worked for a gentleman. I won't say that I liked working for him, but I worked for a gentleman for seven years, the president of the company. His name was David Schumacher. Uh, He had been a veteran of both CBS and ABC News. Back in the heyday of CBS News, he was one of their top guns. David was married four times. I know that just from from somebody else who knew him, one of his wives died of cancer. And I believe what happened, I I garnered this in a conversation. We were at dinner one night, and he was explaining that, that, that a lot of the people that he worked with ended up divorced. Because CBS News had them globetrotting all around the world, and the wives finally got sick of the fact that they were never home, and the wives threw in the towel. 
He told me a story. He said the reason Roger Mudd did not get the anchor desk and Dan Rather did was because Roger Mudd was the only guy who remained married to the same woman for decades on end. Because Mudd said, I, I won't be working weekends. I want the anchor job, but I'm going to go home and spend it quality time with my family on weekends. So they went with Dan Rather, who said, I'll work seven days a week. And, of course, Rather had faltered marriages, too. But the thing is, we don't know. When media says, well, she's had four husbands, we don't know when she's had those husbands. Did she have three husbands and then suddenly, suddenly, you know, did she have a road to Damascus moment? Did she suddenly make a sincere, repentant uh, act at that point? Because I'm gathering, the media doesn't understand that. The media wouldn't know what that would mean. She may not be the same woman today she was a year ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. People, and, and, and for, the, for the people out there who have just a vague understanding of Christian faith, that might be the media, of course, they wouldn't, they wouldn't know that. So they would just say, oh, well, look at her, ha, ha, ha. And, and your homosexuals would say the same thing because obviously uh, they're looking to deflect the criticism from their lifestyles. It's 9-13. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, 736 300, and you're up next. Another one of those calls from outer space. Is it Morris Code? Is that what somebody's actually transmitting? I just a little curious about that. Could be a very important message that we're, uh, we're missing at this point. 736 300. That number again, 736-0300. Also, my email is bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. And you're up next. Yeah. All right, you, you can listen to the phone, and uh, that we won't have get caught up in the delay. Go ahead. Yes, uh, you know, God's laws of singing yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and you got to give the lady some props for sticking to her guns. I mean, if they really wanted to do it, somebody else could have got up on the counter and got that done. But the other thing is, why is it lately that they have to take away one person's rights to give another person their rights? I mean, I understand that gay people said that they want a case, and I, I don't agree with how they want the case, but they want the case. They want to get married. I think they should have had unions, not married. Right, but but you know it, it's it's neither here or there. She had his rights, but yet their rights trump hers. I, I it, you know this is this is where the rub is. Well, and she's making a stand, and then you, we've got a rough connection. I think I got most of that, and and I'll I'll say this: the folks on the left don't really care, right? They don't care about because they don't really believe. I mean, they they they, they just give lip service to faith if they if they. If have any consideration of it at all. And they think it's superstitious. They think it's a, you know, it's a, it's an anachronism. It doesn't belong to this modern time. And therefore you're just silly. If you actually believe in God, go to church and, and follow what laws they think are just mythological. You're up next at 915 on top story on news radio, 1310 KLIX and news radio, 1310.com. What's on your mind? I just wanted to comment on uh, the idea that a, a business is required to perform its services for whoever walks in their door. I think that it's silly. There was a time, I know when I was growing up, you walked into a business that has a sign right behind the counter and it said we have the right to refuse service to anyone for any reason. And you like doing business with somebody who's going to choose to do business ethically and so you can choose that. And if people didn't want to do business with them because they thought they were racist or bigots or religious zealots, then those people could choose not to do business with them. And if that drove them out of business, that would be reasonable. Right. You but just go somewhere else. Up, exactly. Just go somewhere else. And and it, it's really obvious. Uh, I know the, the woman in uh, Richland, Washington, the florist, she'd done business with this person for a really long time, and she there was no problem with it until... It was the wedding, and she said, I can't do a wedding. And thank you. And so they, um, they, uh, you know, she said, well, you know, it's, it's to do with the wedding, and it's a moral issue for me. I can't do it. And they threw a fit. And, yes, they'd done business with her before, but she's not the only florist in town. 
by far. And the case in Colorado with the cake. Right. The bakery. Well, you, you realize. They, they hadn't even done regular business with those people. They just went to them on purpose to drive them out of business. You realize it's about, it's about vengeance. Uh, yeah, you know, you, exactly. you've, you've got people who are angry because they're not sure of their own lifestyles. And, uh, and you know, they, they've been riddled with guilt and, and, you know, their own doubts uh, for many, many years. And uh, this is, it's a little bit like that reporter who shot up the, uh, or that reporter who shot up the two former co-workers uh, last week. Uh, you know, he is, he is so wrapped up in his own shame and his own, uh, his, his own shortcomings that he wants to take it out on somebody else. Right. And I, I think that it's far more valuable for us to be letting businesses uh, work their own way out of it. If you, if people don't want to do business with you anymore, then you'll go to business. If people do, then, then, then they'll and you'll stay in business and you'll be successful. And I, it, I think that that's the way it should play out. That's the way the market right. should play it out. We, we, we run this stock market game. It's part of our economy. It's a huge part of our economy. Obviously, it runs our lives on a daily uh -huh. basis, whether it goes up and down. So let the market on every level play itself out, whether that's private businesses or public corporations. I thank you much for your for your time as well. And we had a fellow from the Cato Institute. I shared some of uh, his comments yesterday on the air, and he simply said that. He said, you know, these 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 laws about discrimination, that's about the government. It's not about you individually. You know, you individually can can make up your mind of whoever you want to do business with. The government, on the other hand, can't exclude people. And 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 that's a valid point. And he said people have forgotten that, that that's how this this actually works. I I have to tell you, anybody who who particularly, I mean, well, they would go out and, and single out a florist or a cake shop out of spite, that's the hater, my friends. That's the hater if you're trying to put someone out of business. And you know what? We don't hate them. I think they're insane, and I think that they need some treatment. I think that they need someone to work with them. That means I care about them. But I'm not looking to put them out of business, and frankly, most of us say to each you know, his own or her own. But the fact of the matter is, they're out for blood. The homosexual lobby has basically, they, they felt oppressed for so long, now they're out to settle scores. And you know what? They're going to turn the tide of public opinion. And I'll, I'll, I'll point out, the Dred Scott decision, that didn't last. We have something in this country called judicial review. So you may have that right today to marry, which is created out of whole cloth, apparently. See, if government wasn't involved, we wouldn't even have this argument. It would be ridiculous. But we are open to the fact that some future court may look at this and say, this is an aberration and completely reverse. That day may be coming, and these people want to push the envelope. They're just likely going to find themselves coming up on the short end of things once more. Call that a mixed metaphor. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Hey, I've got some more uh, news from the uh, Twin Falls, uh, Falls County Fair coming up a little later in the program. A week from Monday, uh, well, I'm not going to be here Monday because it's Labor Day. I'm taking the day off. So a week from Monday, uh, that's the 14th, I'm going to be joined in studio by Dr. Christine Pickup. She's a doctor of audiology, Mount Harrison Audiology. Now, they're located in Rupert. In fact, if, you, if you're familiar with the area, 1218 9th Street, Unit 2. And uh, you can reach them. And this is for people who, who might need to see someone. If you, if you already have been sent there, you know, you've got a recommendation from your, your primary care physician. Or, you, you know, you've got some concern. You think that you're, you're, you're not picking up things that are being said or the things that are going on around you with your ears. You can reach them at 208. That is uh, Mount Harrison Audiology, 312-0957, 208 0957 or audiology.com. Hearing loss and dementia are linked. Hearing loss becomes a great burden on the brain as you have to expend more time and energy to decipher what others are saying to you. Treating hearing loss reduces the strain and makes hearing more natural. Keep your brain healthy by taking care of your hearing. Speaking of hearing, here's a thought. Uh, here's a thought. How come the people who run the sanctu uh, sanctuary cities, places like uh, Austin, Texas, San Francisco, California, Chicago, Illinois, how come they're not being jailed for violating federal law or court decisions? How come, how come they're allowed to get away with all of this? How come this woman goes to jail, but if you violate the law and you're a liberal, you're allowed to continue to do that? 
54. 924. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. And you're on the air. Hey, uh, I'm just uh, want to follow up on that last caller. The, the lady said that, uh, you know, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. And and I tend to agree with that. But what about when we see something on TV that we don't like? Why can't we just turn the channel? Yeah. Um, um, well, that's been the recommendation for a long, long time uh, from uh, the television networks themselves. Cal Thomas jokes that way back in the 80s, that's what they used to say when Christians would complain about the uh, the degenerative state of television in this country. Thank you much for the telephone call. Our, our number, if you'd like to reach the program, 736-0300, 736-0300. Also, my email is bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. So you've got lots of people who are nullifying laws in this country or trying to. It apparently depends on which laws you're nullifying, though, about whether or not you end up going to jail. You're up next, and you're on the air on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Whether or not you end up going to jail. Hello. You're up next, and you're on the air on News Radio. All right, can, can, we, can we turn the radio down and listen to the phone? We, no. have, we have a delay, so if you turn the radio down and listen to the phone, you'll be much better off. Yeah, I've turned it off. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm a, the lady that they put in jail for standing up for her uh, beliefs. What about when so many government entities that you go to to get any kind of help uh, or dealing with uh, DOT compliances and things? There are so many different interpretations, and they don't all know all the rules. And if, if we don't like it, and we make any kind of statement, uh, they don't even help us at all. I thank you much for the input. I want to squeeze another caller in here right behind that one. You're up next, and you're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Am I on? Yes, you are. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, Bill. I just want to thank you for your program. You've been a true blessing to our community and our little valley. Checks in the mail. <laughs> I wanted to share with you an observation I've made over the years. I have a nephew who is gay. I knew he was gay when he was three years old. And bless his heart, he really tried over the years to have... Uh, relationships with the opposite sex. However, it didn't work out, and he about had two nervous breakdowns uh, by the time he was 18. So he gave in to that lifestyle and uh, started having relationships with men. Um, He's about 23 or 24 now, and I've watched this beautiful, young, intelligent man grow into, uh, I just, I don't know what, Uh, the language that comes out of his mouth, the way he thinks. um, He was involved in the gay movement in Boise and just loves to the anger and and, uh, getting even with people. I just swear that they are just wired wrong and my heart just goes out to them. You know, from a biblical perspective, you would say that they're possessed by a demon. Or demons. Um, there are absolutely times when I would say that, yes. I know that that's not considered to be a, a modernist thing to say, uh, but I have a lot of Protestant friends and, and many Catholic friends who would all agree with that statement. Uh, if, you know, if, if, if there were demons in biblical times, those demons likely haven't left us. Correct. I so thank you. We just you. have to hate the sin, but we still have to love that sinner. Yeah, we have to have compassion for them, and, and I thank you much for your call. That does not necessarily mean tolerance. One of the great thinkers in the, in the Roman Catholic Church, a fellow by the name of uh, Charles Chaput, that's a French name, but he was his, his mother's an Indian, and he was born and raised in Kansas. His father was French-Canadian or descended from French-Canadians. Um, he is, by the way, not popular uh, with the current pope, even though the, he's going to be visiting Chaput's uh, city of Philadelphia. Chaput serves as archbishop there. The Pope will not elevate him to cardinal because, well, he's not towing the, the current Pope's liberal line. 
And Chaput is what you'd call a diehard biblical conservative. And he made a speech in Canada way back in 2007. I believe he's been barred from returning. He was speaking in Toronto, and apparently during a Q&A, somebody from one of these alternative lifestyles got up and said, well, you know, you need to be more tolerant of us. And he said, he said, I'm sorry, tolerance is not a Christian virtue. That's true. Now, the fact that we are being tolerant, I think, speaks highly of all of us. And nobody is here going out hitting anybody over the head with rocks. But I do believe that these people need some sort of, how shall we put it, therapy. I'm not saying a conversion therapy. I'm just saying a lot of these people with identity issues, yeah, demonic, I guess is how you could say it. It, it, It's very much potentially possession. If you come uh, come from a religious perspective, on the other hand, it could also be something that's just going haywire with the chemistry in the brain. We don't know. But if that's the case, then we darn right have to be at least compassionate. And uh, that means we have to treat people just like we would treat anyone else that we meet every day. 9.30, Bill Colley with you, 54. Some news from the Twin Falls County Fair coming up in just a couple of minutes.